Hi friends, welcome to Garmin's Virtual Air Venture Oshkosh Experience. My name is Jordan, and I'm happy to share with you the versatile GI275. We're all sad we weren't able to visit with you in person this year, but we're happy to bring to you our products wherever you might be today. The GI275 is one of my favorite products, and I'm very excited to share with you the great features and benefits the GI275 provides. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at our kiosk. In our kiosk, we have three GI275s installed. Up top, we have one that is installed as to serve as our ADI. Down below, we have the GI275 installed to serve as the HSI. And over here, well, this GI275 isn't per se mimicking an install in an aircraft, but we have it installed as a great way to be able to share with you the features of a multifunction GI275. Before we talk about the many great features of the GI275, I first wanted to show you the actual hardware. I have in my hands a GI275. It's designed to fit the standard instrument cutout. It's also a compact unit that was designed to easily install in your panel. The GI275 is touchscreen and uses a dual concentric knob. We can interface with the unit with the touchscreen and the dual concentric knob. The dual concentric knob allows us to navigate between pages and make menu selections. Garmin offers the GI275 in three variants. The first variant is the GI275 base. This unit is going to provide us the MFD features like the moving map, the terrain page, traffic, and EIS. Garmin also offers a GI275 with Adahars. Adahars will provide us the PFD features like airspeed, altitude, and attitude. Then Garmin offers a GI275 with Adahars plus autopilot. This unit provides autopilot support for those third-party autopilots. Now, Adahars, many of you are wondering, what does that mean? Well, Adahars, that's an air data computer and an AHARS unit built into one. And so these things are combined into one unit installed internally to the GI275, which saves you installation time, which saves you money. Now we talked about airspeed and altitude, and that's displayed on the GI275 with Adahars, which we have installed up here in our ADI position. So the GI275 with Adahars, we have our airspeed here on the left, our altitude on the right, and we have attitude in the middle. Now, many of you have come to expect from Garmin PFDs is we have the bugs. We have our airspeed bug, our heading bug, our altitude bug, so on and so forth. Well, the GI275 also provides that. So for example, we have our airspeed bug up here. Now to make a change to all our bugs, first we have to select the value we wish to change. So we'd push the airspeed, we tap on the airspeed, and then I use the inner knob to make the change. So if I want to, uh, bug 90 knots, I just move it up to 90. If I want to change the altitude bug, I can do the same thing by first selecting it and then using the inner knob to make the selection. And I can do the same thing for the, uh, the heading bug. Now it is important for me to note Garmin offers two variants of the GI275 without a HARS, the three in one and the four in one. The three in one does not include a magnetometer, so you wouldn't get magnetic heading. The four in one does include a magnetometer, which does provide magnetic heading. So if you do want magnetic heading on your GI275, make sure to get the four in one. One of the great features of the GI275 is its bright, high resolution, vivid touchscreen display that allows us to bring you optional synthetic vision technology into a screen of this size. Below our ADI, we have installed the GI275 that provides us the HSI. Now the HSI operates just like a traditional HSI. We have our course deviation information, we have our heading information. When installed with compatible Garmin navigators, we can bring in our GPS course information and we could also include our VHF navigation for like VOR or ILS. Now to make selections on the HSI, just like with the ADI, we first select the value we wish to change and use the inner knob to adjust the value. We do the same thing with the course, if we wish to change the course. And when we go back to heading, just like how we uh, uh, talked about up uh, uh, with the ADI, how I can press the inner knob in and it centers up the bug, well, the same thing happens with the HSI. I can press it in and we're good to go. Now, one of my favorite things about the HSI 
if you see the magenta diamond. Now the magenta diamond, that is your actual ground track. And that's really a fantastic feature that aids in tracking courses and applying that wind correction. We also have the HSI map with this unit. Now the HSI map incorporates the features of the HSI and adds the moving map. With the moving map, and we'll talk a little bit more in greater detail what the moving map does for us, but the moving map allows us to overlay traffic, train, and weather on the HSI. So what that allows us to do is we have our HSI and we have all that other wealth of situational awareness information that all right in one. So when we're doing our instrument scan, we don't have to look at multiple places to get the information. It's all right there in front of us. Now that we've gone over the many great features of the ADI and HSI, I thought now would be a great time to mention that with these two units installed in this configuration, as you see right here, you can replace your entire six pack. And this is because the GI-275 is serving as your primary source for airspeed, attitude, altitude, and turn coordination. And vertical speed is also displayed. So with these two units alone right here, you can scrap your entire six pack. I would like next to turn our attention to the GI-275 we have down here. This one is intended to serve as the MFD. Now the MFD brings in a multitude of information like moving map, train, traffic, and so forth. And it gets the information when it's installed with select Garmin navigators. The first feature I wanted to share with you is the CDI. The GI-275 CDI it works just like a traditional CDI you've probably used before. So we're able to select our course with a CDI uh, button. We can change between the magenta needles or the green needles if you want. And we can use the inner knob to change our course selection. The next page I wanted to share with you is the MFD data page. And now I mentioned it before, but to navigate between the pages, we use the outer knob. The outer knob is what changes the pages. So on the MFD information page, this gives us some of that pertinent information like distance to next waypoint, distance to next destination, our bearing, our, our course, and even our ETA. Next, I wanna share with you the forward-looking terrain feature that the GI-275 provides. On our terrain map page, we can see terrain and obstacles. They are color shaded to show the danger that they may present to us. Red shading indicates obstacles or terrain that is within 100 feet of our position. Yellow indicates terrain or obstacles within 1,000 feet of our position. We can adjust the zoom by using the inner knob. The next page I wanna share with you is the moving map. The moving map gathers a tremendous amount of information and displays it in one source for us. It can display things like airspaces, our flight plan, terrain, it can even display intersections and airways. We can adjust the zoom using the inner knob. The moving map can also overlay weather and traffic, which can also be displayed on its own dedicated pages. For those that have radar altimeters, the GI-275 also includes a radar altimeter display. Next, I'd like to share with you the EIS features of the GI-275. The GI-275 may serve as a dedicated engine information system source for your four or six cylinder Lycoming or Continental engine. The GI-275 displays the engine instrumentation on dedicated pages. So on this page here, our main EIS page, we can see we have our engine information like RPM and manifold pressure. On the left side, we have fuel, we have fuel flow, fuel gallons remaining in our tanks, and we also have oil pressure, oil temperature, and our cylinder head temperature. It also provides dedicated pages for exhaust gas temperature and cylinder head temperature. It also includes a fuel computer that displays fuel remaining, fuel burn, and kind of really helps us with our fuel calculations. One of the cool features of the GI-275 is it does include lean assist. So we can set lean assist up for lean of peak or rich of peak, depending on what your aircraft requires. And we can use lean assist to make sure our aircraft is properly leaned out. One of the other great features is the GI-275's built-in Bluetooth allows you to stream the EIS information from the GI-275 to Garmin Pilot which allows you to view it real time on Garmin Pilot 
and it is also then stored and then uploaded to Fly Garmin where it can be viewed at any time. In addition to the wireless EIS capabilities, the GI275 can transmit flight information to Garmin Pilot or select Garmin portables like the new Era 760 using built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So using the Bluetooth, we're able to connect our iPad or Era 760 to the units and we can share flight data like our heading information, airspeed, position, all that sort of stuff right there onto our portable device. The Bluetooth and Wi-Fi also allow us to do database updates wirelessly. As you'll notice, there's no SD card slot on these units. This gives us the option to use Garmin Pilot to update the databases using Database Concierge. Database Concierge allows you to download the databases from Fly Garmin onto your portable device, like an iPad running Garmin Pilot, and then using the built-in Wi-Fi network, we're able to take those databases from our iPad and send them to the units. And the cool thing about the units is they're able to push the databases to other GI275s and select Garmin Avionics installed in the same system. So we don't have to update the databases for each individual GI275. We can do it once and we're done. Now, for some of you who do not wish to use a, 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 an iPad to update your databases wirelessly, we have the GSB15 that allows you to manually update your databases. Using a flash drive, we're able to download the databases from Fly Garmin and then take that flash drive, insert it into the USB ports on this GSB-15 and update the databases manually. Now the databases are installed internally on the units, so you don't have to leave the flash drive inside the GSB-15 at all times for your databases to function. And on top of being able to update the databases with the GSB-15, the GSB-15 is also a 3-amp quick charge charging station. So you can actually charge your portable devices in flight using the GSB-15. Well, thanks again for joining us today. I hope you learned something about the very versatile GI-275, and I hope you consider installing the GI-275 in your airplane. If you do have any other questions about the GI-275, please visit your Garmin dealer or go to www.garmin.com for more information. From all of us at Garmin, thank you again for joining and fly safely.